thank you, Your Excellency, for having us today. Uh, let's start referring to your long-standing experience in the Western Balkans. Two months ago, France, Denmark and the Netherlands decided to postpone the opening of the EU negotiation talks with North Macedonia and Albania. Shortly after, French President Emmanuel Macron uh, came up with a, um, a reform proposal regarding the EU enlargement process, which was far from welcomed by the most of the member states. Given your experience, what is your take on the future of the EU enlargement process? Well, of course, during the Finnish presidency, we had a very close contact to Western Balkan countries, to those who are already in the pipeline and, and, and to those who are not yet there. And uh, I also paid a visit b both to North Macedonia and, and Albania and had excellent talks with their, their ministers and, and, and governments. And, and of course, if you look at the map of, of Europe, Western Balkans is just in the middle of Europe. It's not somewhere on the on the edge of the Europe, it's, it's, it's a very crucial part of Europe in, in my mind. And therefore, actually, we should have an integration perspective for the whole uh, Western Balkans, including Kosovo and, 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 and so forth. Uh, at the moment, uh, the, the closest, of course, to start the negotiations have been uh, North Macedonia and, and Albania. And, uh, of course, it was a disappointment disappointment not only for these countries but also for us who have been advocating the start of the talks that we couldn't do this during the Finnish presidency. We are waiting that this will happen during the Croatian presidency. We wish them very good luck on, on this issue and we hope that this, uh, I would say, this uh, formal uh, question raised by France how to maybe renew the, the, the overall process could be also solved at the same time that it, it shouldn't block the, the access of, of North Macedonia and Albania. I think for the youth of these countries and for the youth of the uh, whole Western Balkans, it's very important that they have the integration perspective. Uh, next question. Apart from Turkey's further shift from EU values and accession process, how do you see the EU dealing with Turkey, a country that keeps posing foreign policy challenges to Brussels in Syria Eastern Mediterranean and now increasingly in, in Libya? Well, Turkey is a very important partner for many EU countries. Turkey is part of NATO. Uh, Turkey has played an important role in, on, on Syrian conflict also by receiving many refugees from Syria. Now hopefully we come to the moment where some of these refugees could move back to their home areas and probably some support uh, is needed. We do not agree with Turkey on many issues in, in, the, in, in their politics or also foreign poli politics, but we have to maintain the dialogue. And uh, for Finland also, Turkey has been a good partner in some uh, peace and mediation processes, let's say in the Northern Africa and, and, and so forth. So we have been discussing on many of these, uh, these issues. But of course, um, unfortunately, Turkey for its own reasons have been losing a little bit the perspective of, of European uh, integration. Finland was, I think it started from Tampere, <laughs> Tampere during our previous presidency, the, 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 the process to, to get the closer uh, relation and integration perspective for Turkey. And, and of course it's a, it has been a disappointment that, that it has not been, been advancing. But uh, despite of that, we have to maintain the dialogue with Turkey. Turkey is an important partner to solve also the crisis, whether it's Syria, Libya and, and so forth. The Normandy Format Summit in December 2019 achieved mixed results with exchanges, um, with some progress made, including uh, increased OSCE monitor, monitoring sorry, and prisoner exchanges, but also tensions between Russia and Ukraine remain high. How can the EU reboot the peace process in the Donbass? And secondly, Finland supports the extension of sanctions against Russia. Would any internal or external factor lead Finland to soften its current position on Russia? 
Well, first of all, Finland has, has been part of this OSC monitoring mission in, in, in Ukraine, and, and uh, we, we think it's very, very important to support the sovereignty of Ukraine, the rights of Ukraine in this uh, process. I also personally paid a visit to Stanitsa Luhanska to, to see actually what's going on between the Ukraine and Donbas border uh, area, and, and it, it, it actually again reminded that we are talking about the life of ordinary people and uh, their possibility to continue their normal life in the in the region. It was very touchy to, to visit those those areas where the where people earlier couldn't cross the, the lines and, 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 and so forth. Uh, at the moment, I think the Normandy process uh, has played a very important role. It's, 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 it's very important to, to achieve some progress on, on this issue. But at the same time, it's very important to stay tough uh, on Russia, that they also have to uh, take care of their responsibilities on, on Minsk agreements and so forth. And I don't see any, any reason why Finland would step back on, 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 on those uh, commitments that, that we have uh, as part of the European Union on sanctions and, and so forth. And these are, of course, not only sanctions for Donbass, but also sanctions for Crimea. But we, we, we are doing our utmost to support the Minsk agreements and, and of course, uh, supporting all these positive steps that have now happened on, on Ukraine issue. Considering the U.S. withdrawal from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action in 2018 and Iran's rollback on commitments after the killing of General Soleimani, what do you think the EU should do in order to save the nuclear deal and avoid further escalation between the U.S. and Iran? Of course, first of all, we regret that the uh, uh, U.S. withdraw from the GCPOA. The, the issues that they have been raising, the missile program of uh, Iran or the Iran's regional interference uh, and, and, and so forth, the, the, these are real problems. But you don't solve these problems by withdrawing on, from the nuclear deal. Uh, and and we, we think that, uh, actually, I think uh, High Representative Borrell said very clearly that if we at this moment would have uh, Iran with the nuclear weapon, we would be in a totally different situation. And I think the GCPOA has been successful uh, preventing uh, uh, Iran to, to, to develop their nuclear weapon. So we have full support of the IAEA and, 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 and so forth. We also have had uh, our own dialogue with, with Iran. Uh, Minister Sarif has visited Helsinki during our presidency and, and, and so forth. And of course, we, we have to support this dialogue between Iran and, 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 and U.S. and try to find ways to them to, to communicate. Because we also see the big uh, changes that are in Iran. We, we see the youth coming to the streets, the protest and, and the mood that is in the, in the country, which is not always supporting the, the, the politics of the leadership in the, in the country. But uh, I think uh, Europe uh, and, and E3 countries have a very, very key role on, on maintaining the GCPOA, of course, asking uh, also Iran to fulfill all its uh, commitments. But I think it's very important that we stay on that line. Finland also has been supporting this INSTEX mechanism as part of the GCPOA in, the, in a way that we could uh, support the, the, the uh, trade with uh, food and, and medicine with Iran. As the Israeli people will elect a new parliament in March 2020, many argued that the outcome of this election might lead to a major shift of, in the EU's relationship with Israel. In the past, the EU has criticized Israel's policies, such as the settlement expansion. But now we have a new European Commission and Council in office, which aim to promote a more pragmatic and strategic approach in the EU external actions. Taking this into account, how do you see the development of the EU-Israel relations in the coming years? Well, of course, we have been uh, waiting for the beginning of the new peace process. Uh, President Trump has promised his proposals. We haven't seen them yet, and, and time is uh, uh, going on. And, and uh, I, I think we cannot leave the, the Middle East uh, like that. And, and, uh, the first principle, of course, is that we cannot accept uh, the enlargement of the settlements, illegal enlargement of the Palestinian territory. I think that's clear. 
he should support the two-state solution also from the European Union perspective. And at the same time, we have to be very realistic with the security demands of Israel. And, and these are the, the components that we have there. And I have been thinking when, when looking how, the, how bad the situation is now that some confidence building measures should be taken. I'm a strong advocate of environmental diplomacy. You know, I'm, I'm looking at issues like uh, can we do something with the wastewaters of Gaza, which are disturbing the people in Gaza, but also the Israel, Israeli people, because the wastewaters are then going to their shore, and, and so forth and so forth. Let's do something practical on, on the issue, helping people there, but also to, to finding the minimum dialogue between Palestinians and, and Israelis on environment, on water issues, and on that type of issues. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for this insightful exchange.